Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we are going to discuss Inventor Basics. And in this series, we are going to do a couple of exercises to show you exactly how to approach and how to use Autodesk Inventor in your day-to-day -day life. So once you open up Autodesk Inventor, it will look something like this. This is your home screen. And as you can see, we haven't, we don't have any parts or any assemblies as of yet in our recent section, but that's not to worry about. As soon as you start sketching 2D sketches or 3D modeling, the those parts will be in this recent section at your home screen. But to get to how to sketch a part, uh, there's one important thing that you need to note, uh, depending on your units of measurement that you need to work in. It's either inches or millimeters that you will be sketching in. And you can change that quite easily in the application options uh, menu at the top of your ribbon here. Uh, but we've done a video on that. I'll post the link to that video in the description down below if you want to see how you can change your unit of measurement. But to start a new sketch, it's quite easy. At the top of your Autodesk Inventor home screen, there is a quick access toolbar. And at the left hand side, you'll see there is a section for new sketches. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can head over to File and you can just select New. And this pop up window will appear where you can then select what type of drawing you want to do. So today we're going to create a 2D sketch and a 3D sketch. Uh, and this is the section we will be focusing on. But as you can see here in this section, there are options for sheet metal, your standard drawings, and of course, assemblies and drawings and, and so on. But today we're going to select the standard .ipt file. And then just at the bottom right side corner of this pop-up window, we will select create. So once you Autodesk has entered your drawing library that you can see here, uh, it will look something like this and it can be overwhelming when you look at all of the options in your ribbon, but don't be alarmed. It's quite easy to get things done in this amazing software. So first off to access where you want to sketch, I'm going to right click on the screen. And from here, I'm going to select new sketch. So you, with your mouse, you can just go down and I'm going to select new sketch. <coughs> and from here, you can see this 3D representation of the planes that you want to sketch in. And it's simple. It's the X, Y plane, the Y and Z plane and the X, Z plane. So this is quite simple, depending on your sketch that you want when you get an exercise, depending on uh, how it's how the layout looks, you might need to be sketching in your X, Y plane or your X, Z plane, doesn't really matter. Uh, for our example, uh, as you can see, we need to sketch in the X and the Z plane. So I'm just going to select that plane and you'll see it automatically rotates to that section. So in your bottom left corner, you can see your orientation as it is now. And at the top right, you can see your part and you can see how your layout is looking. So from our sketch, we want our Z plane to be basically in our upright position and our X plane in our right hand side so from here you can simply just rotate on at the top of your right right hand side i'm going to rotate this so you can see our x plane is where we want it but we want to flip our z plane upwards so in order to do that we need to head to the back of our drawing as you can see here now our orientation is exactly like we would like it so then I don't want to leave this drawing like this because once you have started your drawing and you get to the extrusion of that drawing, then your 
center points won't align. So I'm going to right click on the top section here and I'm going to set the current view as my top view. So now you can see our top view, it's lying in the right position here and our orientation of our drawing is exactly like we would like it. So from here, we'll start our drawing and it's going to be a simple drawing. I'm going to select the line function and once you move across your plane, you'll see where your positive and your negative X and Y sections are. But from this, I'm not going to move and exactly search for a coordinate. I'm going to click on the tab button on your keyboard and this will highlight firstly your X value, your X coordinate that you want to use. So I know when once I look at my picture here, I'll see that I'm going to use a little bit of math to solve this problem. So my X coordinate I'm going to use is going to be minus 20. I'm going to select the tab option again and my Y value is going to be minus 30. And before I select enter, I'm once again going to press the tab button and you'll see Autodesk places your coordinates uh, where your coordinates that you've entered is going to be. So once you see your orientation and your X and Y values match up to something that you would like, then this is exactly where you'll start. So I'm going to press enter now and you'll see we have our first coordinate and from here we can draw our line in whatever direction it may be. So for now, I'm going to just continue with this. It's going to be a 10 millimeter line in a 180 degree direction. And let's just zoom into this drawing a little bit. You can do that on your mouse scroller. Uh, mine doesn't work that well, so I'm going to try and avoid zooming in and out to show you guys. Otherwise, it will look like Autodesk just broke. But from here, I'm going to continue with my dimensions that we've received from our drawing. And I know we need a 24 millimeter line in a 90 degree direction. So I'm going to enter that. And then we're going to have a six mil line in a 90 degree direction there. So these degrees is relevant to your last point. So as, I, as you can see, it's a 90 degree angle, or you can have your angles. If you rotate your section, your degrees rotate depending on your last coordinate. So now I've got a six mil there. And from this, we can calculate that we need a 12 millimeter line in a 90 degree direction. And then once again, it's going to be a six millimeter line in a 90 degree direction and 24. I'm just going to finish up this drawing quickly. So then it's a 10 millimeter line, once again, a 90 direction. So once I've now sketched the right hand side of my drawing and I want to stop here. So you can see the line continues as you draw, but to stop this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, okay, on the right hand side. So from here, you'll see this stops your line from continuing to the next point. And here we can now see our dimensions in our sketch. So you can move these dimensions and just to see and get yourself a better idea of what is happening. So from this, I've got my dimensions, as you can see all over this sketch and to edit these dimensions. Let's say you've entered the wrong uh, dimension and you want to edit this sketch. I'm going to double click on the dimension that I want to edit. And from here, let's say I'm going to have a 30 millimeter line. And once I select my new dimension, as you can see here, it changes the line applicable. And this doesn't influence the rest of your drawing. As you can see, we have our center line here. And the whole drawing did not move with our changed dimension. Uh, this is a great tip 
if you need to change something in your sketch and so once we've drawn our right hand side of our sketch let's quickly draw the left hand side this will then uh, just complete our sketch so i'm just going to select a line again and from my coordinates you can see here our x and y coordinates i'm then again just going to press the tab button to highlight my x coordinate and i'm going to select a 20 for our x coordinate our y coordinate will be a minus 30 and once i select that you'll see our coordinate is placed on our sketch plane and you can preview where this exactly is and from this I'm just going to select enter and from this i'm going to draw my lines as it was so it's going to be a 24 millimeter line in that direction again six mil in that direction I'm gonna have a 12 millimeter line and then once again a six and from here if you enter the tab option you can actually change your degrees your of the direction of your line so let's say you see this is 180 degree and this is 90 degrees i'm not going to show you exactly but this is zero so you have an idea so if you want to change the the degrees of your line you can do that as well but we'll get to that soon enough so we've got our six millimeter line there and upwards we're going to head to our 24 in that direction and then a 10 mil line there so now i'm just going to right click select ok so you can see the two sections of our left and our right hand side of our sketch and this is our basis of the sketch and it's quite easy to actually sketch this and once you get the hang of autodesk this is going to take you no time at all but from here i will now select another line and i want to draw my horizontal line over here where these diagonal legs will connect to so i don't have the direct dimensions for this all i know is that it is 10 millimeters from my center point so my x value i'm just going to make that a 15 as i said i don't know the exact um, dimension for my x value you can calculate this with some math but to do a quick drawing this is a quicker option so i know my y value is a 10 and from here i'm just going to drag it over doesn't matter how long it is as long as you have a basis to follow here just going to repeat the process so my y my x value make it a 15 again my y value will be a minus 10 and from here i'm just going to draw it cross and i'm going to finish the line from there so i know this there is a better way to do this there are a lot of ways that you can approach this problem but as I am showing you, this is a quick and easy way. So I'm once again selecting a line and I'm going to head over to the points here. And now we've got this diagonal line moving downward. So from here, I know the degrees that we want to achieve. So it will be a 180, let's say minus a 50 degree. So you can do math when entering values into these uh, dimensions. Uh, you do, don't need to precisely calculate it before you enter your value. As you saw there, we can do basic math in this. So I'm just going to select it there. I'm going to press OK. Then from another line, we know our angle is a 50 degree angle. And I'm going to select it there. So as you can see, we've got this. And it looks a bit messy with all of these extra lines all over the place but i'm gonna head over to the trim section at the top of my ribbon in the modify section of our ribbon and i am now going to trim you can simply draw a line and trim or away all of the excess lines that was in your way so once you've done that we can simply complete our section on this side so i'm going to select our point there 
and we know I want to change the degrees. I don't have the exact length of my my diagonal line there. You can, as I said, you can calculate that, but simple to put it simple, you know, this is 130 degree angle, and I'm just going to continue this line on that degrees to finish it up there. So from this, I'm going to select my line again to get my other leg. And I know my degrees is a 50 degree line. And there you can see, once I click OK, you can see the next section of our drawing. So I'm going to trim away the excess here. And then you will have your basis. So this is our base for our 2D sketch. And it is quite simple. From here, we, once you are happy with all of your dimensions, I mean, you can change your angles of these lines. You can change the dimensions of your um, sketch, as I've shown you already. And from this, I'm just going to click on finish, finish my sketch. And you'll see our sketch look something like this. So let's get back to that sketch. I'm going to select this sketch and I'm going to say edit sketch. So on your left hand side, you have your model and everything that's going on in your model. So I'm going to select my sketch one and I'm going to edit my sketch to get back to the drawing. I see there's a little infringement here. So I'm just going to head over to the trim and I'm going to remove that from our drawing. So from this, you'll see we have our completed sketch. And now we can just rotate this once again to get exactly where we want to. So this is our 2D sketches, and this is pretty easy. Finish your sketch here, and then you have it looking something like this. So to add an extrusion to this part, it's quite simple. Uh, once you have done your sketch and you've finished your sketch, you can just head over to your 3D model. And at the top of your ribbon, in the create section of that ribbon, you can head to extrude. And once you've done that, this pop-up window will appear. And as you can see, we have our sketch and you can extrude this into any direction. So as you can see your directions here, depending on your drawing and where you want your center of mass to be, you can extrude this into different directions. If this is your default setting is to extrude outward. You can extrude to the other way, as you can see there. And you can do a symmetric extrude here. And this will effectively showcase your extrusion. And this will extrude your drawing to an equal part both ways. And from here, you can do an asymmetric extrusion and then you can enter your dimensions for your distance, your first distance and your second distance, depending on your drawing. So once you extrude, let's do a symmetric extrude. You can just select your distance that you want to extrude. And once you've done that, you will see that your extrusion will now be Let's just edit this extrusion again. Sorry, this was not what I wanted to do. Edit your feature so that we can get back to our extrude so I can explain everything. So the distance is 20 millimeters and that will be your total extrude. So it will be a 10 mil extrude to your one way and a 10 millimeter extrude to the other way. So that is as simple as that and that is how you apply an extrude function to your sketch, your 2D sketch. And I hope everybody enjoyed this video today. If you did, please remember to like the video down below and subscribe to our channel because we've got a lot of interesting content coming your way and some more exercises in Autodesk Inventor. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, cheers.